Hey guys, welcome back to the basement. Nathan is here, Toolbox is here, Bert is here, everybody's here. Um, we're going to talk about something that I originally built. Uh, it was kind of a neat build for a buddy of mine. Uh, I shipped it off to him, played with it for a little bit. It really wasn't just quite his flavor, so it ended up coming back to me. Which is, to be honest with you, I'm totally fine with because I kind of wanted to keep it when I got it finished. But, you know, I was building it for him, so it ended up going to him. Now, that being said, this is a project that I'd wanted to do for quite some time. Uh, I, I love modifying stuff. I really love trying to push the, uh, the envelope on this, the, the whole Cocker platform. I think it's really cool. This is not my modification. Someone else much smarter than me came up with this. And I just kind of uh, copied some designs from guys that have already done it and, you know, took, took advice from them on what's the best way to go about stuff. Uh, anyway, what we're going to talk about is a new frame autococker, okay? So, uh, now when I say new frame, I don't mean like N-E-W, okay? It's not brand spanking new frame. It's a P-N-E-U frame or pneumatic framed autococker. Now... What that means in this case is that we are using pneumatics to operate the frame inside the autococker, or it mounted to the autococker. We're using pneumatics to operate the frame. So what this, this is the marker in question, okay? This was a fun little sleeper build. Uh, as you can see, looks relatively stock with just a couple shiny touches. Um, this did originally have a stock back block and just a uh, lightened and polished up stock bolt on it. Uh, I may end up swapping them back. Well, we'll see. But anyway, this is a new frame autococker. Now, as you can see, we have a Trilogy SF frame, but something looks a little different. Okay, we have an extra little rod here, and we'll cover up the goodies inside, but we also have an extra little hose here. Now, we'll talk about what is going on there. So that frame starts out as a Trilogy SF frame. As we can see, Got our little button there, we've got an LED and some switches and some boards and all kinds of electronic garbage that we just don't want anyway, because mechanical is better. But, what we want to look at, what we want to focus on here, is this little silver piece right here, okay? We have our electronic solenoid, we have this right here, which is a one-way air ram that pushes up into the frame. Now, if we look at the top of the frame, you can see, obviously, this is not a standard setup as far as frame internals go. So, the sear and this actuation portion, I guess, because it's not actually attached to the trigger. The trigger and that are two separate pieces. But, this portion here and the sear are linked by a spring. I don't know if you can really see down, but you see how this front portion, this actuation portion, goes down under the tip of the sear. That is what our little air ram pushes on, okay? So as that air ram pushes on this, this portion comes forward, cycles the three-way, as well as that sear rocks down in the back. So normal operation of this, you'd turn it on, the battery would go in. Every time you hit the micro switch, it would tell, you know, you would have that little hose. Uh, the other one, uh, it's, it provides LPR pressure, and we'll go over that in a second. You would have an LPR hose coming down and in, it would be hooked up in there, and every time you would hit that micro switch, it would tell this solenoid, let air through, to go, and it would hit that, cycle the three-way, and drop the sear, basically at the same time. Uh, super, super cool idea. Now, what do we do? Because obviously, a lot of the stuff out there, you you know, it's, it's an obsession. We want to make things mechanical. How can we do that with this frame? This is how you do that. Okay, so you can see in here a lot of stuff's missing, and there's a lot of other stuff in there. So what we've done in this case, in order to do an, a, uh, a new frame, SF frame conversion, is, as you can see, we still have the little air ram. Okay, that has to be there because that's going to actuate our timing rod as well as drop our sear. So what we've done is unmounted the, electrical, the electronic solenoid from it. Drilled and tapped for a small little bitty 632 barb to still supply air directly to that ram. Then here, you can see this is kind of shiny there in the back. This is a chunk of Lexan mirror that I cut for a mounting plate. And this is a Fabco MSV2 valve. 
So basically what this does, as you can see, we have a hose coming in here, goes into this one port. At, when you actuate this little lever, it shifts the spool and lets air through the other hose. But essentially a, a one-way valve. It's just an on-off valve is kind of what it is. So what we've done is mounted that, drilled a hole through the frame here for a small rod of aluminum. Let's see if we can get a good back so you can see it. And now when we push on the trigger, it actuates that rod, which actuates the valve, which lets air up through into the ram and actuates our timing rod and our sear. So now we have a completely mechanical SF or select fire frame, or what we would call a new frame. So this one, uh, it, it's, it's a little bit of a labor intensive project, uh, but it's also really, really cool when they do finally come together. There is a lot of time making sure that your measurements are correct and a lot of time spent taking, um, you know, as always, you can always cut twice, but you can't put more material back on very easily. So in putting that actuation rod inside the frame between the trigger and the MSV2, slipping it in, slipping it out, unmounting the trigger every time, taking a lot of measurements, taking the tiniest bit off at a time to make sure you have a good crisp actuation point. Uh, and it, it honestly, it's a lot of fun. My fingers are not that talented when it comes to walking. Uh, I, I don't get to play very often anymore, so my fingers have kind of gone dumb. But I have a buddy that I work with who uh, it has very fast fingers. Uh, the guy shoots a lot of paint. And uh, he was able to get this thing. I mean, we were easily at 13 to 15. I think we maxed out on 15 BPS uh, running it over a virtue clock. So with the right adjustments in the trigger and the right attention to detail and lots of practice these things are nasty uh, so and it's really neat because honestly once you button up the panel on the other side really doesn't look like much until you look close so that is a new frame okay a pneumatic frame in this case it was done in a trilogy sf frame um, i would love to see these are also done sometimes in uh, like auto mag uh, frames which is also really cool um, but uh, I'm planning on doing some other conversions, and I want to see if I can push this and maybe put them into a different frame. I think it'd be pretty cool. So we'll see how it all goes. Uh, that's pretty much everything we're going to cover tonight, and we'll see you guys next time.